Remains in English can be two things. One is that what is left behind, remains of something. And the other one is that it remains forever, something that, that resists time, you know. So a lot of my work involves uh, inserting myself into the, into the recycling of uh, materials. So at some point I enter the life of that material and I choose to bring it back into, the, into another space, which is the space of uh, an artwork. So it gets another uh, life, it gets another direction. I think it's structured from the way one enters the space of the piazza to begin with and the movement of people, the viewers from one end of the Navate to the, to the other end and then the final room of the cubo. It was an engagement to see what what is the entry work that's going to be and what is it, the nature of it. And we decided to combine two works that were versions of each other to, to bring them together in the piazza and to bring in a sense of theatricality in the first impression. So moving on from there, I did not try to make them theatrical anymore. They exist as they are. They, they occupy spaces to the extent that they can or want to. And so the second work is the other stones that are around me here, consisting of 200 stones. These stones have been uh, brought from India and presented here in a kind of a different context altogether. But I think the abstract nature of these stones, the, 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 the block, the rough block of granite with the carved hole on the top with a, with a border to it is something that was also very important for me. I chose to work with a hair rope, which is um, a material that's used in South India as a, as a talisman to ward off the evil eye by on, on vehicles as well as animals and wherever one feels vulnerable. And they come into a three and a half meter lens and I, this, the work here involves 15,000 meters. I chose to somehow make it dense, to make it into a dense form, rather than highlight the individual, uh, the rope itself. Unless you go very close, you don't realize that it is made, consists of rope that has gone up and down the, the framework. In the cubo, I also decided to place on the floor the work collateral, which is um, made of incense material that has been made into shapes and kept on the frame, on the metal frame, and then slowly uh, lighted to burn itself out into an ash. And in the process of burning, they do sometimes change form and create certain textures and colors. But in the end, it is a very, very fragile uh, form. And that fragility and the ephemerality of that, I think is very much part of the, what the work is about. So it's on one hand very delicate, but at the same time, very much 
talking about life as well in the in sense of transforming of uh, by becoming transformed from one solid material into this very ephemeral material The other work I made was using rubber and uh, this being a place of the Pirellis it was uh, possible to work with the the company to with the with the factories to get assistance to get advice from people as to what the possibilities could be with the rubber uh finally i chose uh, something like about 20 cm wide uh, rubber sheet uh, which had uh, longitudinal lines on it very uh, quite uh, handleable it's not was not too thick in itself and i chose to weave them through each other so that it created a a kind of a large carpet like form this was then placed over a table which looks like it has collapsed under the weight of it when i choose a material it comes from already a certain need in me there's a certain thought process going on in my mind and after having chosen it i don't try to dominate it i don't try to come up to to turn it into something else but use its materiality its shape to to create what i have to create so it's a it's a complete um, dialogue with the materials not my own will imposed on the material which is why i think uh, in all the works that you see here the source is never quite hidden it is it's always there it is what i do with it in a perhaps a gentle way <laughs>